Oh my god, I'm Donald Blake. I bought this lab coat for a future video, but I wanted to wear it more than once to justify my purchase. Hi everyone, let's talk about Ant-Man. If you didn't know, our video theme this month is superhero science, and we kind of uh, stretched the definition of superhero with Han Solo last week, but we're back on track talking about Marvel's Ant-Man. And oh boy, Ant-Man is, he is a fountain of things to talk about scientifically. Many people across the internet have already talked in length about the inconsistencies of his weight and density and all of that stuff. I'll have links in the description below if you want to go read some of that. But there's one thing that I haven't really seen many people touch on just yet. Even if Hank Pym or Scott Lang could shrink down to the size of the tiny Avenger, they would probably be effectively blind. Let me explain. The light that we can detect with our eyes is only a tiny slice of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Light hits Thor's hammer here, some of it's absorbed, some of it's reflected into my eyes, and that is how we see. I mean, obviously the sight is a little bit more complicated than that. We're not gonna get into the specifics here, but the average human eye can detect wavelengths of 390 nanometers to 700 nanometers. The different wavelengths within that range also helps determine the color that we see. That green lantern light back there is around 510 nanometers, for example. The wavelength of of sunlight is a bit tricky because it consists of many different wavelengths. But for the sake of simplicity, for this video, let's say that the average wavelength of sunlight is 500 nanometers. The pupil of your eye, that little black hole that takes in the light, the diameter can range from about two millimeters to eight millimeters in a normal human adult. Why did I specify human? Let's go ahead and meet in the middle and say that the average pupil diameter is around five millimeters or five million nanometers. So when Ant-Man is normal human size, his pupil is around 10,000 times bigger than the wavelength of light that we're using. Again, 500 nanometers. 10,000 times bigger, that's plenty of room for the light to travel. But we encounter a problem whenever Ant-Man shrinks. Now both the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym and Scott Lang are six feet tall and they can shrink to around a half an inch. Now obviously we've seen them shrink smaller than that, but the Marvel website says that this is about their average shrinking height. That would mean when they're shrinking, they reduce their size 144 times. This also means, of course, that their pupil is 144 times smaller, going from 5 million nanometers to only 3,500 nanometers. Instead of 10,000 times bigger than the wavelength of light that we're using, it's now only 70 times bigger. And we can make that even worse. Remember that a pupil diameter normally can even be as small as two millimeters. When shrunken down to ant size, that becomes less than 14,000 nanometers or less than 30 times bigger than the wavelength of light that we're using, again, 500 nanometers. As you can imagine, and as James Caclios points out in the physics of superheroes, this presents a series of problems for Ant-Man's vision, but we're only gonna talk about one. In his analogy, Caclios draws up the imagery of a large lake with two docks very far apart. The space between these docks represents our pupils. Waves created on the lake can pass through the channel between the two distant docks with little issue. Sure, the part of the waves that hit the docks can bounce back and create interference, but the middle of the channel is barely affected by this since the docks are so far apart. However, if we keep the waves the same, but bring the docks closer together, then we start to have a problem. That interference pattern starts to have a larger effect. It screws with the waves and can even cause them to cancel each other out. The interference created thanks to Ant-Man's tiny pupils may cause the Avengers' vision to be blurry and dark. He'd be unable to properly process the light that's headed towards his itty bitty eyes. And if that's the case, then could he ever really be effective in battle? He'd essentially be blind. But I know what you're thinking. Ant-Man wears a helmet. And that is true some of the time. I mean, sure, if comic books can create advanced shrinking technology, then surely they would allow a helmet with, I don't know, special lenses that allowed uh, compensation for the wearer's vision. But all that is mainly speculation. The helmet typically is just used for talking to ants. But even still, the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, can grow and shrink at will thanks to long-term exposure to Pym particles, which is why we've seen him ant size without any helmets. And yet he seems to be fine. Not only that, he can even shrink other characters like She-Hulk and Hellcat in this example with seemingly no side effects. But in reality, there's a reason why human eyes and the eyes of smaller creatures like Ant-Man's insect friends are designed so differently. Ant eyes are typically less great at high resolution imagery and better at detecting large movements. Ants also rely less on sight than humans do. Instead, navigating their world through chemical trails and vibrations, the sense of touch, which sounds like a completely different Marvel. 
character. What if those aren't horns? What if they're in 10? You know what? Never mind. If you want to read more about the science of Ant-Man, there's a bunch of information in this book. Once again, The Physics of Superheroes by James Cacleos. Probably don't take it verbatim though. There's some information that I had to update myself, but either way, if you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description down below. Also, I just wanted to say hello to all of our new subscribers that came to us from Mr. Sunday Movies. I apologize for the weirdness that was the video I did on his channel, but I'm glad you guys found it uh, charming, I guess. And just like last week, I want to remind you guys that we have a Facebook page that you should definitely check out. We are live streaming there every single week, every Monday, talking about your comments and questions from these videos. So if you want to hang out or just keep up to date on all the stuff that we're doing, go to facebook.com slash nerdsyncproductions. Speaking of things on the screen, here's another video that you might want to watch. And if I can ever get videos edited on time, we will have another one on Saturday. We're getting a little political, so that's gonna be fun. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.